Hi, this is Regaline Sabat, also known as Gigi, and you're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Tracy Ori Ami. Tracy is a financial literacy consultant. Welcome to the show, Tracy. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. It's an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us more about you and where you are from? Awesome. Yes. So I am Tracy Oriomi. I'm originally from Palmetto, Florida, which is in the Tampa Bay area, but I'm now in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been living in Atlanta for, wow, 30 years. I can't believe it's been that long. I'm married. I have two young adult children and I am on a crusade and a mission to educate women about money and how money works. Because when you know how money works, then you can put yourself and your family in a better financial position. I love it. I love and it. you are also a health and wellness advocate. What inspired you to become an advocate for health and wellness? Well, you know, I just think it's so important to be healthy because if you don't have your health, what good is having all the money in the world if you don't have your health? It's just so important to be healthy so that you can live a, a quality of life that will allow you to do the things that you want to do. Amen. Very powerful. Now you talk about financial literacy and how you love helping others learning about it, but you also founded the online networking group called Women in the Black. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Yes, Women in the Black. So as a result of the pandemic, I could no longer go to networking organizations. I used to network a lot and go to various networking organizations just to spread the word about financial literacy and meet other people. And when COVID, when the pandemic started last year, I decided, you know what, since I can't go networking in person, I'm just going to start my own networking group online. So I called up a few friends and we got together and decided we're going to start networking online because I wanted women to be able to support one another, not only during the pandemic, but beyond the pandemic. So we meet once a month online on Zoom and we network and we have women from all different backgrounds. We have attorneys, we have real estate professionals, we have authors, we have mortgage professionals and we, we network. I love it. So let's say someone from the audience wants to join in to network. Where can they join you all? Well, they can email me um, at tracy.oriomi at wealthwave.com, or they can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, and I will send them the link to join our monthly Zoom networking event, Women in the Black. Fantastic. And I came up with that name because I want women to be in the black in their finances. You know, so many women are in the red, and when you're in the red, you're in a deficit. I want women to be in the black, not only financially, but mentally, spiritually, emotionally. I want women to be in the black in their relationships and, of course, in the black with their money. So hence the name Women in the Black. I love it. I love it. Now, you also have a motto and your motto is don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. Talk to us a little bit more about it. Absolutely, because a lot of people are waiting for the perfect time to do things. They're waiting for the perfect time to live. And you just have to do it now. Don't wait, because there's never going to be a perfect time. So many people say, oh, well, I can't save any money right now. I'm going to wait until I get a better paying job. I'm going to wait until I get a raise. I'm going to wait until my kids graduate from school. And they're constantly waiting, 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 and nothing ever happens. So you can't wait. You just have to do it now. That's right. Do it now. Now, we are both financial experts. Let's talk a little bit more about financial literacy. Now, what are your thoughts on financial literacy not being taught in the early stages of the education for, for, for individuals? Well, you know what, um, Gigi? I really believe that financial literacy should be taught in elementary school. And unfortunately, it's, it's not even taught in, in high school. And it's something that we all need. We can't survive in this world, you know, without being financially literate. And a survey was done with high school students and the students were asked what course they would benefit from the most. 
And the majority of the students said they would benefit from a course on money management. And unfortunately, it's just not taught in school. And it definitely needs to be taught just like STEM and STEAM and all the other programs that are brought into the schools. It's very important that financial literacy be taught as well. Fantastic. As far as financial literacy goes, what is the main component that you believe needs to be discussed in our education system? Well, one of the main things that needs to be discussed is making sure that you have a budget, the B word. A lot of people don't want to talk about the B word, but you have to know what's coming in and what's going out. It's so important to track your money. Most people don't track their money. Most people have a mental budget, but they've never, you know, written anything down or put anything on paper. And it's so important to have a budget. Amen. That's right. Financial literacy truly matters. Now, Tracy, tell us a little bit more about the major challenge that you had to overcome in your life. Well, you know, I grew up thinking that money was just for spending <laughs> And, um, you know, as I got older, I realized money is just not for spending. Money is also for saving and investing. Well, you know, when I went off to college, I was bombarded back in the 80s with credit card companies. You know, they swarmed our, our campus and, you know, they gave out all these cards, credit cards to students. And when I graduated, I graduated with a lot of credit card debt. And it took me forever to pay off those credit cards. And I and I couldn't understand why it took me so long to pay off my credit card debt. And it is because I was only paying the minimum payment. It took me forever. So I did struggle with credit card debt after college. And it was something that took me a long time to, to overcome. I love how I love you said overcome because you, you overcame that major challenge. Now, what would you tell someone who's going through the same situation right now, how they too can overcome? What helped you get through? How they can overcome is to not get in debt in the first place. So I didn't realize that you should only spend 30% of your credit card limit. I thought that if I had a thousand dollar limit, that I should spend a thousand dollars, or if I had a two thousand dollar limit, I should, you know, I could spend two thousand dollars, not realizing that I needed to be more responsible. I had no idea that there was something called a, you know, credit utilization, and you know, not using all of your credit. It wasn't until much later that I learned that I should only have used thirty percent of my credit um, limit. So. I would advise if, if you have a credit card, do not max it out. Only use it when it's necessary. Don't use it to buy something that you're, you're, not, you're not even going to be thinking about later because it took me about 10 years to pay off a Sears credit card. I didn't even wear the clothes anymore. I didn't wear the shoes anymore. All the things that I charge, I'm st I was still paying for it and hadn't even... Had, basically have forgotten about everything that I used that money for, and I was still paying for it. Very, very powerful. Thank you for sharing that with us, Tracy. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? Walking with purpose and living a life of happiness. So find out what you're passionate about. What is it that drives you? What is it that makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning? What is it that's going to make you feel fulfilled and make you feel like you're you're making a difference in this world? Because we were all put here to make a difference, to have an impact in someone's life and to be a light, to be an example and to be the best that you can be. That is how I would describe walking in purpose, figuring out what you're good at, figuring out what drives you and making an impact in the life of another person. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Now, how important is your faith to you? Gigi, my faith is very important to me. I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up going to church with my family on Sundays and 
going to uh, Bible study. I sang in the choir as a youth. I sang in the, the youth choir growing up. So my faith is very, very important to me. I am definitely a woman of faith. I love it. Very powerful. Now, Tracy, thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. Where can the audience find you? They can find me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, also, they can uh, email me at tracy.oriomi uh, at wealthwave.com. Or you can go to my website, howmanyworks.com slash Tracy Oriomi. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Tracy on all of her social media platforms and also her website, wealthwave.com backslash Tracy Oriyami and also howmoneyworks.com forward slash Tracy Oriyami. And Tracy, again, thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. You have a blessed day. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Gigi. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And happy new year. Happy new year.